Happy Friday. So, um, this message is in regards to praying and waiting and listening and being obedient. But um, I've been thinking about doing this message for a few weeks now. Um, oh, just re- in regards to praying and waiting, right? And for some reason, I haven't been able to get this message out. But um, the past week has been like a testimonial into my understanding in regards to praying and waiting. So that's what I want to talk to you guys today about. Um, I also just want you guys to know that we have other um, groups and pages um, that I want to welcome you guys to. Um, the, the, I'll share the pages on my page today. So it um, it will be like I would really like if you guys join the group. Um, so that we can fellowship um, more in a more intimate setting. But um, today is a message. It's Saturday. It's a midday message. I hope you guys are well. I hope you are um, happy and safe and hope everything is going to be okay. So um, this is praying and waiting, listening and being obedient. Okay, so... um, we are going to be reading out of Jeremiah 11 and 18. We're starting with Jer- Jeremiah 11 and 18. And um, I was really looking at the entire um, 18 through 23 and then also 12, 1 through 6. But in regard to the message and everything, we'll see what we can get through. But definitely Jeremiah 11, 18. But first, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. We, I know, Lord, that, that we are only merely vessels to be used by you for your glory, Lord. So I ask that you work through me, Lord, that you speak through me to deliver this message, to edify your children and also edify myself, Lord. Let this message be thorough in the delivery, Lord. Let me not misstep or misspeak, Lord. Let all the nerves and all of the nervousness go away, Lord, and let it be all of you speak through me to deliver this message the way that it was given to me, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for everything, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, um, Jeremiah 11 and 18 reads, um, and the Lord has given me knowledge of it, and I know it. Then thou showest me they're doing right so um the reason so we're going over jeremiah 11 18 because in these verses jeremiah was aware or became aware of the plot against his life right and we have to understand that in our spiritual existence in our walk with christ in our attempt to be christ-like in our lives in our following of the christ teachings we have to understand that we'll come up against opposition, right? And the crucifixion of Jesus Christ was a basic introduction to that reality, to that understanding of that is what we're going to have to deal with, or that's what we're going to have to come up against in regards to staying on the righteous path, that path, because the road is narrow, right? So the road is narrow. Jesus is the way. The way is narrow. Jesus truth and the light right so in regards to staying in that consciousness into in regards to staying on that path we have to understand that we will come up against opposition because that consciousness and that way of life is not prevalent in the world that we live in in the world that we dwell in and so we have to understand that um there is a fight right and we have to be able to hear from god in regards to that fight and we cannot hear from god if we are not existing in a christ conscious because that is um the way god communicates with us right so when our thoughts exemplify the word of god we operate in a christ conscious and the word of god comes from jesus christ teachings right so we have to think like christ be like christ dwell in the spirit of christ to be able to understand what God is speaking to our spirit, right? How we should observe things, how we should move, how we should um, handle different situations, right? So um, Jeremiah 11, 18 reads, and the Lord has given me knowledge of it, right? So knowledge of God is given to us through scripture, right? 
So that's the knowledge of it. It's like a lot of things that we know, but we don't really know. Um, so we have knowledge of things, but we don't know. We're not for sure. We can't, we can't stand on it, right? So there's a lot of things in regards to history, in regards to different cultural religious practices, in regards to psychology and philosophy and sociology. There are many things that has been presented to us in regards to education and knowledge, right, on earth, right? But there's nothing that we can stand on and say, I know this, right? So let's continue to read. And I know it is what Jeremiah is saying, all right? So he knows, right? So this is how God communicates with us through the power of the Holy Spirit. So um, when our thoughts exemplify the word of God, we are operating in a Christ conscious. Therefore, we can observe situations in a Christ conscious. And the reason why this message is a testimony um, to also, right? Because last week was kind of hectic like you know everything is okay now right but my son um was wasn't feeling well last night and we was going back and forth to the doctor and i was like you know what's going on god i was like wait a minute god like i know like i can feel that that things are transitioning i can feel that you are growing within me i can feel that you are pushing me further and further in the direction that i'm going through so why is this happening now right so um what i realized in that week that there are a lot of things that we don't pay attention to that we don't observe in regards to our praying and our waiting, right? We are, God speaks to our subconscious about things. We need to see things we don't want to see and things we cannot see, right? So these are the three ways God speaks to our subconscious, um, either through dreams, right? And when I say subconscious, I mean um, without us being fully aware of the message that we are getting, right? So we get messages in regards to how we feel, our intuition, our thoughts, our dreams, um, different ways we get messages, right? But we can't really decipher the full meaning, the full content of what God is trying to communicate to us, right? So these are things we need to see. God exposes us to things we need to see initially to get us, to get our attention, to get us um, aware of what might, will soon be exposed, right? So um, then we have things we don't want to see. What usually comes about from those um, pre-warnings or, or um, introductions are things we don't want to see sometimes, right? Because um, if we did want to see it, then we wouldn't have to need to see it, right? We would see it already. We would see it if it was something that we wanted to see, right? But God will speak to us in many different ways to communicate these things. So let's go back to the scripture. And the Lord had given me knowledge of it, right? So it's a lot of things in scripture that we do not understand, that we cannot comprehend, that we cannot come into the understanding of, um, including the teachings of Jesus Christ. But if we choose to believe that um, God is who he says he is, and Jesus Christ is who scripture says he is, and, and our instructions that was given to us, by God is prevalent is, is still um valid in the world that we live in when we look around and we see how things are unfavorable for so many people and even for our own spirit to exist in this world is unfavorable, right? So if we choose to believe that we are children of God and we are recreated in the image of God and we are sent here to make a difference in the world, then we will choose to believe the teachings of Jesus Christ unless we better identify with things of the earth. Of the earthly realm if that's how you want to identify then that's what you will become um, a victim to right so we are trying to elevate our consciousness with our way of thinking to be at the right hand of the father right which is where jesus christ that's where our conscience needs to be that is where god can use us to be a vessel in his in his kingdom and on earth and to help others our family our children and our loved ones right so um so I was having dreams, right? So I said, like, my son, he wasn't feeling well, right, last week, but he's okay now, right? So I've been having dreams about it, and um, I attribute to them, I attributed them to some type of warning, but I didn't try to interpret them for sure, for sure, right? So um, we do have to stop ignoring the messages that God is giving us in regards to different things. Yes, I mean, we do not have to jump to a conclusion in regards to what God is telling us as either, right? So a lot of us attribute our communication um, in the spirit realm to something negative because we live in a fearful mindset. But understanding that in a Christ conscious, God will send messages and things and, and situations for you to understand and decipher in a way 
that is going to bring, bring clarity and growth and, and prosperity and love to you, right? Because um, that is the, the God way. That's God way. That's God wishes for you. God wishes for you to prosper. God wishes for you to be, um, you know, healthy and happy and, and to flourish and to be fruitful and to multiply. Because understand that is what God originally created you to be, right? So um, in the events that were um, occurring, I searched my heart for the appropriate observation, revelation, and response in all the ways. Um, and all of my ways are centered in Christ, right? So if all of your ways are centered in Christ, then um, the observation, the revelation, and the response to unfavorable situations will be in a Christ understanding, right? So, But we have to understand what a Christ understanding really is, right? So we have to understand that um, when there is a Christ understanding, there is a sacrifice, where there is a um, alleviation of your physical fleshly thoughts and evaluation of the situation for a Christ evaluation, for a Christ revelation, for a Christ observation, for a Christ response, right? So in that understanding, this is where the growth happens. We always talk about Jerusalem, of Jerusalem, at Jerusalem. Whenever the, the Bible says at Jerusalem, it speaks to me in the sense of a place where crucifixion happened. This is a holy place. This is the where the place where the Holy Spirit intervenes in your life and give you different revelation and growth in um into who God wants you to be, right? So um in the events that were occurring, I searched my heart for the appropriate observation, revelation, and response. And I had to make sure that all of my ways were in centered in Christ, right? So when you are um disconnecting from your carnal sense. Good evening. When you are disconnecting from your carnal sense of self, right, and you are connecting to your spirit self in Christ, you have to understand that some of your ways and your ways of thinking and your processing of situations was not of God, right? And, and the way things were done and the way things they used to be done and the way you would have processed this thing has to change, right? So, um, and the Lord has given me knowledge of it, and I know it. Then thou showedest me their doings, right? So in this sense, um, in the sense of the scripture in which we're reading out of, Jeremiah was saying that he was, um, he was, he had knowledge of the situation, right? He had knowledge of the situation, and he um, knew it, right? He knew it because he had confirmation within his spirit, right? So something that we have to take to God in prayer and we have to make sure that um, in spiritual confirmation of the situation that we are observing things properly, right? But we have to be sure not to observe things in fear, but um, because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind, right? So when you have a sound mind, you um, do not live your life according to the way the world will view certain things, right? You take everything to God in prayer. So, and the Lord has given me knowledge of it and I know it, right? So, so I knew it. No, there's confirmation with the Holy Spirit. There's confirmation that comes through prayer, right? In observation, right? And then thou showedest me their doing. So through the Holy Spirit, God will continue to um reveal things to you, but you have to pray, wait, listen, and be obedient, right? So there's a four-step process that needs to be completed before you are able to be revealed to the conclusion, the divine conclusion of whatever God is trying to communicate with you, right? So, um, so, but I thought I was like a lamb or an ox that is brought to the slaughter. And I knew not that they had devised devices against me saying, let us destroy the tree with the fruit thereof and let us cut him off from the land of the living and his name may be no more remembered, right? And this was Jeremiah. He was doing some things that wasn't like common during that time, right? So they was trying to kill him. And the same thing for Jesus, whenever that you're trying to make a change, the spiritual enemy might come up against you um, in regards to your observation and your revelation and your response to a situation. So anything could be occurring, but it is the way you view it that makes a difference. It is the way you respond to it that makes a difference. So responding to something and viewing something in a Christ conscious will leave you at peace to be made to make the right decision in regards to God's will for how you should handle the situation, right? 
So, um, so just to go first, so my beloved son, right? The one I birthed was tripping. He was tripping, y'all. He was tripping like, like tripping. I was like, what is going on? Like, what is happening? Like everything was going smoothly. Like, you know, we were trying to, we were vibing in the house. The, the gospel music was playing. I was reading the Bible. Everything was, but he started tripping, right? So um, there is a warning of spiritual warfare, right? So even if there's a warning of spiritual warfare and my son tripping and he don't feel good, so I'm like, okay, so, um, you know, is this like spiritual warfare? Is this what's happening? So um, I called 911 because he didn't want to go to the doctor. Um, plus, we went the day before and they said it was sinus issues. So 911 comes and he said he's not critical enough. So we go back to the hospital and they do a few more tests, but there's no answer. Right? So in 19, so this is like a testimonial and a message, right? But um, I wanted to look at 19. But I was like a lamb or an ox that is brought to the slaughter. And I knew not that they had devised devices against me. So when we look at this scripture, we have to look at it in the sense of how your walk with Christ can go. How, you're, how you are a living sacrifice for the will of God, right? And a lot of us are afraid to be living sacrifices. A lot of us are afraid to surrender to that much um, vulnerability in regards to our existence here on earth. So that keeps us in bondage to this earth because we are not readily available for God to use us in the will, in his will, according to how he created us to be, right? So um, Jeremiah and his servitude to God in his in his righteousness and in his, in his um vulnerability to walk and be used by God. He says, I was like a lamb or an ox that is brought to the slaughter. And I knew not that they had devised devices against me. So in this world, there are so many things, so many devices against us, against our spirit selves being dominant in our lives. There are so many things that are keeping us from tapping into our spirit self. There are so many things keeping us from the spirit of Christ, right? In regards to just everything, the music, the entertainment, the normalcy, the what's what's normal in life, what what is um acceptable, what's what's the norm, right? I want people want to fit in, people want to be a part of what's normal, and we are not um strong enough or or dignified or I don't even know the word for it, but we are not um I think we just lack knowledge of God, right? So we are not committed to um understanding God's character enough to really delve into the process of getting to know him and choosing Christ, right? Because we can't just accept, we don't want people to accept Christ out of fear. We want to, we want you to accept Christ out of the love of God, the understanding of God, the knowledge of God. We are no longer on the milk of Christ, but on the meat of Christ, right? So there is a place in between the milk of the gospel and the meat of the gospel in which you become a slot, in which you become a lamb right that you have to become a lamb because there is no way to get to the meat without that crucifixion and resurrection right there's no way because the only way to get to the meat is through the holy spirit and that is where the holy spirit comes about in that holy place sorry in that holy place in which um in which you are um giving up your carnal self for your spirit self right so your carnal self has to die. Your carnal thoughts, your carnal ways, the way you deal with situations have to die, right? Because the ultimate sacrifice of prayer is waiting and trusting God in the knowledge and existence of a Christ spirit. So we no longer pray against our enemies because we know our enemies have a purpose. We just pray for our own salvation, for our own understanding and our own grace from God to be within his will. Um, so because the world is bigger than us, right? The world is bigger than us. Our issues is bigger than us. Everything is bigger than even our suffering. Our suffering is, is God is bigger than any of that, right? So we have to understand that we have to go through the process of observing situations in a way that we're not putting ourselves in front of the situation. We're not saying, oh, it's because of woe is me. We have to give up the woe is me attitude and take on I'm a child of God attitude. Because woe is me is not getting us anywhere, right? Only God can get us where we need to be. Woe is me is, is falling victim to the world, falling victim to the bondage of this existence, right? So we have to understand that in Christ, we have our salvation. In Christ, 
we are given the instruction by the Holy Spirit in Christ. We are not only given instruction, but warning and, and direction. So, um, what I say? Okay, so I called 911. He called 911 came. They like nothing wrong with them. So I'm like, God, what is going on? Is this a test? Should I ignore this? But then I remember that my son, my child is something that God has given me as a gift, right? Has given me as um, something that I have dominion over, something that he has trusted me with to take care of in this earthly realm. So a lot of us, we um, understand that, yes, dust your feet off. Yes, be committed to doing the work of God. Yes, um, keep your eyes on the prize. But there are some things we cannot abandon for um, whatever reason, even especially not for earthly um, wealth, but not God is not going to tell you to ignore certain things in your life, certain commitments that he has given you, certain covenants that you have entered into, right? And um, marriage and, and family and different things like that, there is a commitment there. Even if you are separating yourself from your family to elevate yourself in your consciousness, you are always sent back to your family. You are going to help them in some kind of way. So understand that that commitment on your life, those things that God has put in you, have entrusted you with, cannot be abandoned for any reason. So your prayer is for God to give you what you need to get through it, not for God to take it away. A lot of the times we want to pray to God to fix things, fix situations, right? Not knowing that God is trying to fix us and give us an insight to something and give us an understanding that will that will change things for for the long haul, right? For a longer period than just this one situation. We need to stop praying to God for quick fixes. And understanding that what God wants to give us is abundance. What God wants to give us is longevity, long life, and hope, and, and life more abundant, and things like that. So, um, so you know, so I was like, oh, this calls for unconditional love, right? So he was proven that he was big. So, okay, I was like, so we started the holistic approach, right? We started the holistic approach, and it worked. Um, but we also had to look at the relationship, right? So... We have to understand that as parents and as children and as um, loved ones and as sisters and as brothers and as friends and as cousins, we all have to look at the nature of our relationships with our loved ones. We have to take the time and look at the nature of our relationships and see like maybe it's something that we did wrong because we no man is an island and there is so much division amongst us that it is causing us to be independent and without anyone to like kind of support us right and that is not what god has for us that is not what god wills for our lives god made us to be unified and um different and accepting of each other but unified when it comes down to it when it comes down to us putting our differences aside and coming together in love right so so in a Christ conscious, you would look out, would look at the situation and be like, okay, so he's tripping, but he's sick and I have to take care of him and I'm his mother and he has, um, you know, like everything, right? So, um, and the doctor can't do it and, 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 you know, God is not making whatever's happening go away right away. So then there's a message in this, um, just like there was a message in everything that Jesus did when he was here on earth. Um, saying that we have to look at the biblical scripture and the physical essence of the teaching of scripture, right? The physical um, essence of the, the lesson, right? But with the spiritual understanding, there's a physical lesson and we have to be able to decipher that in the physical um, manifestation of the scripture. But there's also a spiritual lesson that we have to be able to observe, right? And this comes in um, praying, waiting, listening listening and putting everything together putting all the components of what you know and what you um what you understand in your spirit and then things that god has shown you like put it all together right put it all together for the appropriate observation revelation and response to the situation in a christ conscious everything is in Christ. Everything that you do, every decision that you make, every um, relationship um, communication is in Christ, right? Now, when it comes to protecting your spirit, you have to protect your spirit. But when it comes to your responsibilities as a family person, you have those responsibilities, right? So that is your main commitment. And understanding once you commit to your family in Christ conscious, God grows you because everything starts at home. 
Everything starts at home. You can't go out and try to preach the word of God or try to teach people how to be Christ-like if, like, in your own home, you are lacking some understanding. You are lacking some type of resolve. You have to take that to God in prayer, and you have to be able to wait, and you have to be able to listen, and you must be obedient, right? So, um, hallelujah. So, I'm like, God... What is going on? Is this a test? Okay, so we started the holistic approach, um, but we also had to, so we had to have some tough conversations. So in our family dynamics, we have to have tough conversations. We have to be able to be uncomfortable for a minute, to have a conversation, a real conversation. A lot of us are going around and we're trying to act like everything is okay and we're brushing everything under the rug and we're just praying over it and saying, God's going to come fix it. But we are not willing to have those uncomfortable conversations. And let me explain to you guys what an uncomfortable conversation entails. An uncomfortable conversation might entail some yelling. It might entail some tears. It might entail some, um, you know, some, some, some things that you might not be ready to hear. But you have to be in a Christ conscious through it all. This is the holy place. This is the crucifixion and the resurrection of a situation of a family dynamics, of a um, parent and child relationship, of so many things. This is the crucifixion and resurrection. When we are able to humble ourselves enough to understand that God is in control, Christ is our head, and we are to change our ways in every way, in every way, every day, to be better than we were yesterday, right? So um, we started, um, So, but in prayer, you must be able to wait and observe. Pay attention to all things in the spirit of Christ. Respond the way Christ would and move according to your individual duties and responsibilities using the gift of prayer. So prayer is a gift. Our ability to communicate with God through prayer and his answering, that is an entire gift, right? But we have to be in the spirit of Christ to be able to communicate with God in regards to listening and communicating. A lot of us um, feel so... Um, unclean, right? Unworthy of God's, um, you know, talking to us that we won't even pray. Like a lot of us don't even pray that much. You be asking people, did they pray? Are they praying? And they be like, yeah, I pray. I pray all the time. I pray every day. No. Do you sit with God and pray? Do you pray about what actually is going on in your life? Do you sit there and do you cry about it? Do you open up your entire heart to God in the process of communicating your ailments, right? Because that is where God is nearer to you, right? That is where God can give you an answer. It might not turn the situation around, but he will put something in your spirit that will give you a solution in regards to not only looking at others, but looking at yourself in regards to what you need to correct, what you need to change, and what you need to do. But we have to be able to get a spiritual understanding of God's way of communicating and not a, a physical understanding. There's so much physical condemnation coming up against people and people are not understanding that what needs to change is their spirit and the things that are afflicting them in the flesh will fall away as they continue to change their spirit, as they're built in the faith of, in the faith of God, as they're built in the obedience of God, right? So in your duties and your responsibilities in a Christ conscious, you are obedient. Right. So the ultimate sacrifice of prayer and waiting and trusting God in the knowledge and existence of a Christ spirit. We no longer pray against our enemies. OK, so there was a verse in here where Jeremiah was praying against his enemies. And you guys can go through it and read it. Um, Jeremiah 18, 11, 18 through 23, and then also 12, 1 through 6, because I don't want to keep you guys that long. But this is just I mean, yeah, 1 through 6. Um, because this is just talking about how um, Jeremiah was praying against his enemy. But understand, Jeremiah is the Old Testament. We are in the observation of the New Testament, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So in the understanding of the New Testament, we understand that Jesus, there's no reason to pray against your enemies, right? Because God says pray. I mean, Jesus says pray for your enemies. God says pray for your enemies, right? Even when Jesus was being crucified on the cross, he said, um, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Because we don't want condemnation, really, to come to anybody. We want salvation for the all. In a Christ conscious, we want salvation for all. So um, if anything less than that is not a, of a Christ conscious, anything where you want to bring harm to anyone, 
is something you got to work on within you. You have to clean that up. You have to look at why you would um, want harm to come to someone versus the salvation of God, the salvation of Jesus Christ in their hearts to change them so that they can be a vessel to be used by God on earth, right? Versus harm when, um, when sometimes when we, you know, pray harm against someone, people, innocent people are hurt in the process when we can just pray for that person, turn their life around and everybody be happy, right? So um, Jesus said, forgive them for they not know what they do. Judas was a part of Jesus' whole prophecy, right? So we have to understand that everybody has their purpose, right? And we have our purpose. So we just pray for our own salvation, for our own understanding and our own grace from God to be with in his will. Um, the world is bigger than us, bigger than our desires and our suffering. So um, in regards to worship, um, um, there was a worship song I wanted to play with holding nothing. Um, so because I wanted to play that song because, um, a lot of us are holding ourselves back from experience, the fullness of God, um, love for us because of our unwillingness to let go, let go of the past, our hurt, our insecurities, our trust issues, let it go. Not in the sense of forgetting about them. Because that, um, because we have those for a reason, but let them go for the trust in Christ, um, teachings and in, in the biblical principles of and God alone. Just let them go for that, right? Because if we hold on to our own um, convictions, we are unable to see the love of God, the love that God truly has for us. We are able, we are unable to let go enough to let God transform us, to surrender to um, the power of God, right? So this message was about praying waiting, listening, and being obedient, right? And I included a testimony about my son because understanding that I was praying for God to heal him from whatever he was feeling, the the discomfort in his body, right? And I was waiting for God to just change it right away. But God wanted to express certain things to me in this process during this week that helped me understand things and broaden my perspective in a wider um, perspective, right? So in regards to um, what I learned this week, I learned that um, I learned that God is in control of everything, right? We When we pray, we, everything, even if things are um, seeming to be unfavorable, he is still in control. And um, there are certain things that we have to observe about a situation that will teach us things that God is not going to to forsake the righteous, that things will be okay, even though I knew that I was just working through that. But um, that um, food is the best doctor, right? In regards to healing, um, in regards to um, taking care of ourselves, we have to definitely look at creating a, a balanced diet, organic farming and things like that. And um, also to um, observe the entire Oh, that our children are, um, we have to be um, compassionate to, toward them. We have to be compassionate toward our children in regards to their growth and their maturation in this generation, right? Because there are a lot of us that we are so stuck in the last generation and how we were raised that we can't really um, look at things from the perspective of the newer generation. We just think they crazy, something wrong with them, but not my son. But we just have to understand that they are different. And they need love and they need patience and they need care. And the way the world is set up is to give them um, anxiety and worry and all of the other things that God doesn't want them to have. And we are the gatekeepers for their reality, their future. And we are to love them and be compassionate and be Christ-like. And that your title doesn't um, relinquish your responsibility of being a child of God. Even if you're a mother or a father or a sister or a brother or a cousin, you are first. A child of God and we have to understand that in that way um, we give ourselves away so yes yeah, so see yeah I like this song so yeah that is the um, in the Christ teachings and biblical principles who we are to be in the essence of how it does not in any way resemble our flesh it does not in any way resemble how we think as human beings we have to stop worrying about who did what and when, why, and, and, and try to heal from that and see things in a Christ conscious. That's why Jesus is the truth and the way and the light, because it is the only doctrine. It's the only 
God begotten son that teaches us how to completely transform our way of viewing the world to become holy in our spirit. Okay, so before we close, oh, you guys, um, if you find it in your heart to give, please um, see the link for the um, the charity um, account for our children who are, they're waiting for their bed. Um, they're doing well. You guys will be able to meet them soon. Um, they're eating healthy, but they do need beds. And it is 30 um, children, right? There's 30 children and um, it's 15 bunk beds. And um, it, the cost is three thousand U.S. dollars, but fifteen hundred dollars will suffice for the mattresses. So if you find it in your heart to give, please see the link. And then also tomorrow, my beloved brother Coffee will be doing the services, um, the service in the church page, um, and then I will be available for one-on-one -on -one, um, meetings, um, to discussions up to thirty minutes long between six p.m. and ten p.m. And if anyone is interested in having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me in regards to spirituality, the Bible, anything you guys want to talk about, because um, we have to help each other in our spiritual um, growth, in our spiritual understanding, in our biblical understanding of, of biblical doctrine, I am here to serve you guys, to serve, I'm, I serve under God, and I serve humanity, I am a servant, so God has blessed me with this gift, so I'm here to help you guys, so tomorrow... 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. inbox me. So there's eight spots, right? So it's 30 minutes and it's four hours. So it's eight spots. Um, first come, first serve. Um, inbox me so we can set it up and um, let me know what, what your best time is between 6 p.m. and um, 10 p.m. And then um, we'll schedule you in and I'll send you the link for your time. I love you guys. Let's pray before we close. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, so much. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Let this word be edifying, Lord. Let this word change the hearts of many, Lord. Let this word bring questions and answers and revelation. And, and, and let this lead people to seek more into you, Lord. Let people open up their hearts and their minds and their spirits, Lord, to receive you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for your power and your peace, Lord. Thank you for your spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you for the confusion. And, and, and the disillusion, Lord, I ask that you take it away, Lord. Give them clarity of thought and, and understanding that will bring them closer to you, God, in the spirit of Jesus Christ, Lord. Give them the strength and the, the courage to take the first step to open their Bible and to read a scripture and to surrender their lives to your power, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for everything, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love you guys so much. Um, so, yeah, be blessed. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Eat healthy. This is serious. We really have to change our diet. And, um, you know, drink water. Take care of yourself. Pray. But remember to wait, listen, and be obedient. I love you guys. Good night. Bless you.